Hi guys, my name is Roberta Peel, the owner and artist at Oregon Trail Silver, and today we're going to be discussing our newly acquired bench and guillotine shears. Uh, we have a 6-inch bench available and we have a 12-inch guillotine shear available. We acquired this business from Potter USA, and they are made the exact same way that Kevin Potter did. We have one minor difference on the 12-inch, but we'll go ahead and show that off here in a minute. So the main differences between the two, aside from the lengths that they're going to cut, you're going to notice the cutting platform is always going to be on the left. So the main differences is that on the handle on the six inch, you're gonna to wanna to pull that towards you and that will give you a cut. On the 12 inch, the handle is essentially lift and closed. The six inch shear rests in the backwards position with the blade open and the reason for that is that in order for this thing to fully close, it has to reach an apex and close down. It rests backwards because the weight of the handle itself rests backwards. So that's why it's left open. Now on the, and also you'll notice that the blade itself cuts from the rear, all right? So when you go to put your piece of metal on, you're gonna be cutting from the backside first. The 12 inch, in contrast, the 12 inch handle is actually leaning forward, okay? And the blade is actually resting in the closed position. And you're gonna find that the 12 inch is gonna cut from the front first. That's why your leveling bar is up front on the 12 inch here. So when you first get your shears out of the package, you are going to want to have to pick it up and move it. Now it's, you know, it's kind of one of the first things people are going to want to do is to grab it by the handle because that seems, seems easy. Please don't do that. I'm going to show you why. <laughs> see when I move it, see how it wiggles? Yeah, don't do that. So what you're going to want to do is not grab it by the handle because the second that you do, if you grab it by the base with one hand and the handle with the other, What's going to happen is that all the weights, most of the weight is in the rear of this thing and it's going to lift up and then you're going to slice your finger off. I'm not paying your medical bills. So when you go to lift it up and move it, you're going to want to turn it with the plate away from you. The closer that you're holding your hands to your body, the, uh, the more stable it's going to be. All right. So if you're holding your hands out here, if you have it turned this way, then you have to hold it farther away from your body. It's not going to be as stable. So take the plate. Take the, cutting, board, take the uh, cutting platform, hold it away from you, slide it to the edge of your table, and then you're going to want to lift. Always keep your hands underneath the base, okay? Keep them underneath the blade, lift it up, and then set it down very gently, which at wherever you want it to go. Anytime you move these, grab them below the blade. Do not grab the handle, all right? Now, that one weighs 45 pounds. I've been moving these things for weeks now. So lifting that up is no big deal for me. If you feel that you need a little bit of extra help, please ask. Same thing goes for your 12 inch. This one right here is 70 pounds. Two man lift, okay? Have one person on one side, have another person on the other side. And as with the six inch, if you're gonna try and move it yourself, if you're big and tough and you think that you can, always make sure that you're kind of leaning it back a little bit because if you lean it back, then it's gonna go ahead and rest on your chest when you're moving it. This one right here, I just, I can't recommend a two-man lift enough. Always the same thing. Never grab it by the handle. Always grab it underneath, by the base, uh, hopefully underneath the feet. It is cold out here, so I'm shivering. <laughs> okay, so the one thing that we did change, by the way, about the 12-inch shear is that your handle, uh, we went ahead and extended it out about another, about four or five inches or so so that you can go ahead and you can raise and lower it. A, that's gonna give you some extra leverage for when you cut, and B, it's gonna prevent you from doing like the old style handles do, and it's gonna prevent you from busting your knuckles on this top part of the, supper, of the uh, uppers. Okay, again, grab it, <laughs> grab it below the blades when you're moving it. All right, so once you get it to where you want it to go and you have it bolted down, then you have to worry about, well, you know, how do I use it? Okay, this is so easy. It's so easy. My my girls can use these. All right, I've got uh, 10 and 14 year old girls and they can use these. Now, when you first get your shear in, you're gonna notice sometimes the handle's a little stiff. You can see mine has a lot of play in it. Mine has a lot of play in it because it's about two years old and it's very well used. Same thing with the 12 inch, all right? Um, but eventually what'll happen is you can go ahead and spray a little bit of liquid wrench or something like that in all the joints and all the moving parts. And if it's a little bit stiff, a little bit of liquid wrench will, will go ahead and loosen it right up. And what you're going to find is eventually it's just going to break itself free. The reason why it's a little bit stiff is the powder. It's just, just the way that it is. 
but it'll break itself loose at one point and it shouldn't take very long. Um, as far as using it goes, the six inch one, six inch shear is designed to cut a six inch piece of metal. Um, when you're using it, you're going to want to take a score mark or something like that, line it up with the top blade, and then you'll go ahead and press your piece down to hold it still and push it up against the break, uh, up against that leveling bar. The reason why you want to push it up is because like a pair of scissors, you know how scissors don't actually remove paper? All they do is they slice in between all the molecules and stuff. So what happens is that your piece is going to want to shift and follow the blade, all right? So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and make yourself a score line. Always give yourself a little bit of extra room just in the off chance that it does kind of wiggle a little bit. And then you push down, you push up against the breaker or up against the leveling bar. Keep your fingers out of the way. And then all you do is you take on the six inch, you pull the handle towards you, okay? Now the end that you cut off is sometimes it's going to have a little bit of a curl to it. That's super easy to flatten out, not even a big deal. The wider that you cut this, I'll show you. The wider that you cut it off, the less curling that you're going to get. But if you're going to cut something super thin off, just to trim it up, well, the metal is going to follow it. The metal is going to follow where you're cutting, okay? So it's going to have a lot of curl when you're cutting a really, really thin piece, particularly if, if it's a thick, thick piece that's very thin. So if you're cutting like this is 20, oh, this is probably 24 gauge. So if you're, or if you're cutting a piece of 24 gauge, there's not really a lot of places for that metal to go. So it's gonna wanna curl if you cut it thin, all right? So that's how you're gonna use the six inch. Now the 12 inch. You are gonna notice probably right away that the blade guard that comes attached to your shear, I don't have mine on. This guard is designed because on the six inch shear, all the weight rests in the very, very back of your handle. On the 12 inch shear, all the weight rests in the very front. This guard is to protect your fingers and keep you from sticking them underneath the blades. And on the off chance that you have a fairly loose blade like I do, or a fairly loose handle like I do, because it's very well broken in. This one is a second hand shear, but it's very well broken in. And, uh, and again, we build ours the same way. Um, it, if this handle comes slamming down, then it keeps your fingers out of the way. All right. I don't use mine. I don't use mine because I like to be able to see where I'm cutting, but please keep in mind that I have been operating equipment, you know, and this isn't even considered heavy equipment for, you know, what I've used in the past, but I've been operating heavy equipment for a long time. Um, you know, probably close to 20 years now. So I know how to keep my fingers well out of the way. Whether or not you use that guard or choose to leave it on is completely up to you. But that liability waiver means that if you do take it off and you cut your finger off because you stick your finger too close to the blade, I'm not paying your medical bills. I'm not liable for that. But for my use, I take it, I take it off. What you guys choose to do is up to you. All right. Now, when you're cutting a, a piece on 12 inch, what you're gonna find is pretty much the same thing for operation, okay? You've got your leveling bar down here below, and then you lift the handle up, slide your metal up to the score mark, line it up with the very, very top of the blade, and then go ahead and lower that down and shear it off. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and shear this one, and there's a good reason for it, and I left it this way on purpose because I wanted to show you guys something. We have these rated to cut 16 gauge, all right? 16 gauge silver, 16 gauge copper. If you cut anything that you're not supposed to on this, like say a four millimeter thick ingot, <laughs> ask me how I know, don't do that. <laughs> but if you do something stupid like that, uh, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna know when you're cutting stuff that you're not supposed to. I'm gonna show you how. So just like a pair of scissors, what you're gonna find is that the two blades touch all right, they're touching and as they slide together, the tighter that they are, the better that it's gonna cut. Now, if you cut something you're not supposed to, and again, in, in this instance, for me, it was a four millimeter thick piece of, uh, piece of silver ingot, which by the way, didn't cut anyways. What it's gonna do is it's gonna throw your blade out of alignment. You see how nice and tight that that is right there? Now let's go to the front. 
You see that gap? Okay, that gap happened because I misused my shear. All right, so if you misuse your shear and you do something you're not supposed to, we're gonna know right away. We're also gonna show you how to fix that, which is why I haven't fixed this one yet. We're gonna make a video when we actually do. All right, so same thing for operation, only because you're cutting from the front, you wanna take your metal. Oh, and this is what it looks like when, it's, when the blades are misaligned, okay? You'll see that it just kind of bends the metal and pinches it. So you, instead of actually pushing up and then trying to hold it like that, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna line it up, push down and pull towards you, okay? Because otherwise that metal is gonna go ahead and veer off this way as it tries to follow the shear, all right? So we're gonna know if you misuse these. <laughs> Um, the maintenance and the upkeep and the blade alignment, we do expect you to maintain those. We will do another video as far as that goes. So uh, if your blade does end up out of alignment or you do need your blade sharpened, which <laughs> I've had that one for, uh, the 12 inch is a, I don't know how long she had it for, but I bought that one secondhand. Again, we make them exactly the same. I bought that one secondhand. The blades are still in really good shape. They just need realigning. Um, they're going to last you a long time. All right. So, but if in the off chance you do something you're not supposed to, we will show you guys how to fix it. Now, let's say, let's say you're trying to make a bracelet blank. Do it about two inches. Okay. Again, same thing, pushing up against this breaker bar. I'm going to give it a little wiggle or the labeling bar. I'm going to give it a little bit of a wiggle here. Let's zoom in while I show you this. Here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a two inch, about two inch bracelet. I'm always gonna give myself a little bit of extra room. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna give it a little wiggle. You can see where it's kind of settling itself up on the very top of the leveling bar. I'm gonna push down and then I'm gonna push up towards the leveling bar. I'm gonna make sure all of my fingers, digits, everything else is out of the way. And I'm going to remember that that metal is going to try and shift that way. Okay, it's gonna try and shift to the right as I cut and then pull the handle towards me. Pretty simple, cuts like butter. But let's say, and if you wanted to, you can always cut a taper as well. But let's say it shifts anyways. This is pretty obviously not quite aligned, all right? It's not square. <clears throat> so if it does end up that way, where it's kind of tapered or it didn't cut square, you're gonna wanna realign your metal back up to the very top and then make sure that you have a little bit of the short end of the taper is hanging off. Okay, it's hanging off below, uh, past the lower blade. And then go ahead and cut it down again. And that'll square it off. Now, you can always start with a piece that's not completely square on all four sides. Just choose a side that's, that's level. And then just go around, do all four corners. Now, yes, it will thin it. But you're going to find that it's still going to be able to lean it out. And again, you, this is a good example. It's thicker on one end thinner on the other and still more curled okay so that's pretty much how you use these and the same applies for the six inch blade if you cut something you're not supposed to it will throw the blade out of alignment we're going to do a video on blade alignment here pretty soon but that's that's our six and 12 inch shears okay we have more in production right now we will go ahead and uh, we've got pre-orders that are coming up for them. Um, if you find and keep in mind that these are not magic machines, all right, uh, they do require some force, some effort. Nothing that you buy is going to be a magic machine. Uh, it's going to, user error is going to play a part in whether or not these work very well for you, okay? If you find that you don't have the strength to cut a 16 gauge piece of, of silver with your six or your 12 inch, there really is no shame in that. I just want you guys to understand that it still cuts with minimal effort, but you know, everybody comes in different sizes and shapes. And what'll happen is you'll find like for the 12 inch, especially for such a long piece, the longer the piece is, the harder it's gonna be to keep it from actually trying to shift towards the blade when you're cutting. So, um, you know, you kind of have to play around with it, do a little bit of practice work on it and just kind of get used to it. Um, but if you find that you don't have the strength to cut a 16 gauge, 12, 12 inch long piece of, of silver or copper, 
then what you can do is you can go ahead and add yourself a breaker bar right here on the end, just like a two inch tube. And I like the one that I have is hammered flat on the end. You slip it on, give yourself a little bit more leverage. Okay. So uh, that is our six and our 12 inch shears. And if you guys have any more questions, please let us know. Um, we do have more that are coming into production right now. Um, we have them back, have a few of them that are back from powder. We'll pick up some more next week. And, um, yeah, we'll do another video on maintenance and blade alignment. Okay. Talk to you later.